Hello and welcome to a little mini training titled Pesach Curriculum Overview and Strategies. These are ideas for every single center and I'm going to help you guys map out your Pesach curriculum starting from the very beginning and then give you ideas for every center. So here we go. Uh, first off, let me introduce myself. I am Hani Wolchansky, founder of Discover Ed Consulting, which is a company that works with early childhood leaders to help them build a school of excellence. And what I absolutely love doing is working with teachers and directors on helping them with their curriculum, with their strategic planning, intentional play, documentation, school cultures, and all different things like that. But for right now, we're gonna dive into our pace off curriculum. So the question that I get all the time from teachers is how should I know what to teach? The holidays coming up, we have X amount of time to teach it. How am I supposed to know what to teach? And so here are the first three questions that you want to ask yourself before you even start planning. Okay, the first thing is what age do you teach? Do you teach 18 months, twos, threes, fours, fives? What age do you teach? That is going to dramatically affect the way that you map out your curriculum, the strategies that you decide to, to use, the provocations that you decide to put out, um, anything that you do is going to be affected by the age group that you're teaching. So that's the first question you need to ask yourself. The next thing is, is that where do you live, okay? Do you live in the city? Do you live in the suburban areas? Do you live in a cold area? Do you live in a hot area? Um, where are you geographically located affects a lot of the curriculum. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. Okay. The next thing is, is what is the parent demographic and religious association that the children have? So here's an example. Okay. A three-year-old who lives in a suburban area and goes to a reform temple. Okay. That's let's say one kind of child. And then you have a four-year-old who lives in the city and goes to an orthodox only girls school. Okay. Both of these children are going to have a very different learning experience based on their age, where they live, the type of school, and the parent body that there is, okay? A child that lives in the city can have very different experiences than the child that lives in suburbia. The types of provocations, invitations, materials, resources that are available to you to teach the holiday are very different if you live in a suburban area as opposed to if you live in the city. Okay, for those of you that live in, you know, the East Coast right now, there's a huge blizzard that's going on, very cold. This is going to affect the way that you're teaching the holiday. You can't take them outside to do certain um, provocations that you want to do or certain experiences because it, there's snow everywhere, okay? It just affects the way that you're teaching. And so you really, really need to be cognizantly aware of that before you start mapping anything out. So... The next question that I get is, so what should I put out each day, right? If there's one thing that, that boggles the teacher's mind the most is, what should I put out today? What, what am I putting out on the tables? What am I putting out in the centers, right? So the centers in the classroom are there to serve the goals of the holiday. Okay, I'm going to say that again. The centers in the classroom are there to serve the goals of the holiday. Centers are not in the classroom for the kids to play so that you can cut and do whatever you need to do for the holiday. That's not what the centers are there for, okay? The centers, okay, when they're set up correctly, are a teaching tool for the children. So you need to learn how to set them up in a way so that they really do serve the bigger goals. If not, they end up becoming these places where the kids play so that you can put together a Haggadah, so that you can put together a craft that needs to be sent home. That's not what the centers are there for. They're there to teach the children about the holiday. And we get confused about that, that only the circle time is there to teach. And that's so far from the truth. The centers are there to teach the children. The circle time is a great review, and we'll get into that in a minute. So up until this point, you have mapped out what age you teach, where you live, the parent body, the demographic. You're very clear on that, okay? That's crystal clear. It's a fact. Like, I work here, I teach this age, you know, whatever it is. And then we move into, so what are we actually going to put out each day and how are we going to figure that out? So let's dive into that. Mapping the goals, okay? What does Passover mean to the children in my class? What do I want them to come home knowing and talking about? 
So they can't learn everything and they shouldn't. Okay, they're two, they're three, they're four. Their mind can only hold so much content. And as educators, we really need to be mindful and intentional about the provocations and invitations that we put out for the children before a holiday. Okay, a holiday can be extremely overwhelming for teachers, and then it's overwhelming for the children. There's so much we have to teach. We put all this unnecessary pressure on ourselves that, oh, the parents want this, and this one wants that, and that one wants that. So much of it is in our head. And we really need to be mindful about, well, what are we actually putting out? Are we just putting out all this stuff? Or is everything that we're putting out truly mindful and intentional about our bigger goal of where we want the children to go with this holiday? So we have our age group, we know where we're holding, and now we're gonna start mapping goals. And we start with asking intentional questions, like what does Passover mean to the children in my class? What do I want them to come home knowing and talking about? We're working backwards. If at the end of our time together in the classroom, before the Seder night, what do I want the kids knowing by the Seder night? If this is what I want, then I need to work backwards and start saying, okay, how are the centers going to serve this bigger goal? All of the centers in your classroom, everything that you put out sits on top of your big goals that you want to accomplish by the time the holiday comes around. So some ideas of bigger goals are like, do you want the kids to know all the four questions? Do you want them to know that there's three matzo? Do you want them to know that there's a concept that we drink four cups of wine? Do you want them to know the whole entire Seder order, starting from Kaddish all the way till the end? Do you want them to know that there's an Afi Komen? Do you want them to know the whole Passover story? Do you want them to know parts of the Passover story? So you want to get super crystal clear about it and not vague of, yeah, I want them to know the story. No, 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 no. The story to a two-year-old is very different from the story to a five-year-old. What does the story mean to a two-year-old? What parts are you putting in? What parts are you not teaching them that they're going to learn next year. Again, it's all intentional and thoughtful strategic planning. And so we want to really map out all these goals and then choose the ones that make the most sense for our age, demographic, location, parent body, and all of the above. So we picked our, we know our age group. We picked our goals now. You can press pause if you want to press pause when we're mapping out our goals. And now we're on to the next stage. So the next stage is new vocabulary words. In every curriculum unit, every unit of discovery or whatever it is that you're doing or any emergent curriculum even, you always want to bring in new vocabulary words and constantly enrich the children's vocabulary. And so after you pick those goals, what are some of the new vocabulary words that you want the children to learn? Okay, some ideas. There's a slave. Okay, that's a new vocabulary word for some children. Okay, Egypt, manishtana, matzah, plague, Seder table. If I'm two, I have no idea what a Seder table is. I don't know what a plague is. I've never seen matzah before in my life. Last year, I was only 12 months. Manishtana, what does that even mean? I can't even pronounce that. Egypt, what is that? Is that a thing? Is that a car? Is that a state? Is that a city? What is that? Slave, okay? So really, really get into the age group that you're teaching and deeply understand where it is that they're coming from so that you can choose vocabulary words that really reflect developmentally appropriate practice. So now we're going on to the centers, and I know that we're moving really fast, but I want this to be a very condensed mini training, and you can always go back and rewatch some of the sections, but I'm going very quickly because I want to give you this um, bite-sized version of, of how I really map out um, curriculum when I'm working with teachers. So centers, how will each center in your classroom teach the goals that you want? Okay. The circle time is great, but that's there as a review for more questions and comprehension checks. Okay. Children learn through play. And if you truly believe that, then you need to set up the centers to teach these goals. 
So if we really believe in intentional play and we truly believe that children learn through play, then our classrooms have to reflect that. And if the kids are sitting in circle time every single day, three, four times a day, 15, 20 minutes each time, then that doesn't reflect the fact that you believe that children learn through play. So you really want to take a look at your schedule and say, one second, if I'm constantly teaching everything only through circle time, then maybe my classroom isn't reflecting the fact that children learn through play. So just take a moment and really think about that. Like, how can I have the centers serve the bigger goals of the holiday? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip through a bunch of different centers and I'm going to give you one or two little ideas of provocations that you can put out in the centers. So this is a block center in a two and a half year old classroom. The kids were about 2.9 by the time Passover rolled around. And what we did was is I had a dad in the classroom um, who worked in, I, I taught in the city. And so he was a manager of different um, Manhattan skyline um, skyscraper buildings. And um, one of the initiatives that I have in my classroom, which I created is called Parents Got Talent. And I invited parents to come into the classroom to share their different talents, skills, um, professions, whatever it is. And I invited parents to come based on the curriculum that was going on in our classroom. And so with the pace, with the Passover unit, I wanted to teach the kids a lot about pyramid building and about building and structures. And so I reached out to this dad and I asked him if he could make bricks with the kids um, in honor of the holiday. And so what we did was, is we removed all the blocks from our block center. The dad came in, he actually ended up coming with his wife also. And he brought in cement and tools and hard hats and mixing tools. And he made bricks with the kids. And then they used those bricks in the block center. And so over here is just a little image of this uh, pyramid picture that we put out. And the kids were creating they were building pyramids from these real bricks. So here's an example of, you know, we took out all the regular box and we created this brick building station for the whole school. So what ends up happening is a bunch of teachers came into my classroom and they saw this and like, oh my gosh, like I would love to have something like this in my classroom. And I said, you know, instead of every single classroom replicating it, let's just put it in the center, in the piazza. And then all of the children in the school can use it. We had five classes that year. And so we set it up beautifully in the center of the school. And any parent that came in for tours then saw it. And all the kids got to come in and play with this during open center time. Um, and we put a beautiful documentation. This was an incredible emergent experience from the Passover holiday, from inviting a parent to come in. So here's another example um, of pyramid sculptures. And this is a snapshot from my Passover curriculum book, which I'll tell you more about at the end. And over here, I gave the kids clay and we printed out these beautiful pictures of pyramids. And over here, you see it says the materials that you need are clay and pictures of pyramids. And the children molded the clay into different pyramids. And this little snapshot here is what it has in all the curriculum books is what skill development does this activity do? So playing and molding with clay can build a child's attention span. Manipulating the clay builds the large and small muscles. And then I go on to explain a little bit more about what this skill development is. And so you as the teacher, you can take this text and use it in your own newsletter. So if you end up putting out this provocation for your children, now you have a great text and language and vocabulary of how to really explain this to the parents. You don't need to consistently reinvent the wheel. Um, so this is just one strategy for the block center. Um, in the block center, as you can see, this was our block center. We also had against the wall, we had a fine motor activity where you set the Seder table. And so these are the materials that you would need and the instructions. And again, the skill development is matching with the negative space image requires visual motor skills and spatial awareness. And it also promotes early matching skills. And so a lot of times as an educator, we know in our minds that this is a really great, valuable activity, but we really struggle with articulating that to the parents so that they understand that we're constantly building the children's skills. And so 
in the curriculum book, it breaks down every single activity and shows you how to really write that in your blog or in your newsletter. So this is just another great activity for the Passover holiday. Now let's go to the Discovery Center. This is just one idea of we set up the holiday table so that the Discovery Center was the first table right when the kids came into the classroom. It was just a beautiful holiday table set up with the four cups of wine, the Seder plate, the candles, just to give them that experience of what a Seder table looks like. So when they come to the table at the Seder for real, at the Seder night, they already have this mental image of what the Seder table looks like. So this is just another um, screenshot from the Pace Off curriculum book. Here are some drama center ideas. Again, I'm gonna show you like four or five of them. Um, in the curriculum book, we have like 20 of them, 20 different ideas for every single age group. So here in the drama center, we set up a matzo baking station. And we set it up in a way that was teaching them math skills, taking turns, social dynamics. As you can see um, in the screenshot from the curriculum book, there was like a bird's eye view of what the matzo bakery looked like. And underneath was the documentation that we created after the children had this whole experience in the drama set, in the matzo bakery. And it, it, it walks you through, you know, the different stages of how we open the matzo bakery and how we were asking reflective questions to the kids throughout the experience. And so you can read further and see the journey that we really went on with the kids during this experience. This is another example um, that we had as an extension of our drama center. Um, so in my classroom, we taught them the first two questions, which was the chametz or matzah, and then the dipping of the maror. And we set it up with this really interactive experience. So I took tissue boxes, cut open the top, and wrote question one, question two. And in the question one box, there was, a pic there was an actual piece of matzah and a piece of bread. And I changed it out daily. And the kids got to pick up, you know, when they were singing like chametz or matzah, and they were interactively doing it during open play centers. Um, and the kids were doing it with each other. So we had real salt, real water. Um, we had carrots over there. We had onions. We had all different things over there. And the kids were really experimenting with it. So this wasn't just happening at the circle time. Today we're learning the second question. This was out constantly for them to constantly practice the questions that we wanted them to know for the Seder night. So here's just another bird's eye view of the matzah bakery. We used a drying rack to create the bakery. We took shovels and we covered them with silver foil. We had aprons in there. We set up all the steps. And this was like really intentionally thinking about the skills that we wanted them to learn and what we wanted them to come home knowing. Here's another view of it, of our matzah bakery. This is when I was in a different classroom, a different year. This is how we set it up. Here is the drama center where um, one year we taught the kids about motion in the basket. And so we set up our drama center to create this entire invitation. And so over here you see this little icon that says newsletter. And so if you were to create something similar to this based on your children, um, where they are and whatever it is, setting up a provocation is an invitation to play and explore. This provocation invites the children to role play and imagine what it was like for baby Moshe to be in the basket. Through this platform, children can learn vital skills such as empathy, sharing, turn taking, and problem solving. Again, here's the vocabulary of how to really explain to parents the value in creating this kind of provocation. Because if you look at it in face value, a parent can see it and be like, oh, so cute. They're playing with babies in the basket. Yeah, it is really cute. They're playing with babies in the basket. But look what they're learning. And you really want to magnify that. So the parents really understand that there is value in play. So many times they're there's this misunderstanding and miscommunication from parents that play is just play and learning only happens at the table or at circle time. And if we want the parents to get on board with this, we have to really articulate that to them and consistently communicate that with them. And so through um, writing that in your newsletter and your blog, you can actually 
bring the parents on board with this journey. And the curriculum really helps the teachers get this language right. Um, so here are just some ideas from the Art in the Manipulative Center. Here's a building provocation with cut up cardboard and clay. And again, I wrote over here, natural and recyclable materials are tiny treasures for the children to explore and use their imagination to create. It has infinite possibilities and the open-ended provocation leaves room for plenty of creativity. Again, you're articulating to the parents that this isn't just this fun activity. There's so much learning and meaning and intentionality that went into this. Here's a Pesach bingo game that we created. Again, based on my bigger goals, what do I want my children to know about for the holiday? I printed out those pictures and we created a bingo game. Here's another one where we have the Seder table. Again, this was, we put it out on the table instead of on the wall. Some circle time ideas. Um, so we actually made these life-size human puppets, like they were, taller than the kids and we made them from recyclable materials and the children took them out they were role playing with them they were playing they were like playing with each other with them we brought them out during the circle time to have the kids really understand the story they got up they were participating in it it was like it was incredible and we created it all from recyclable materials um again going back to your bigger goals, what your school vision is about. If you truly are using natural and open-ended and recyclable materials, then use them always, not just when it's like, um, you know, obvious, use it all the time. Um, and lastly, here are some sensory ideas. So this is just regular sand and we added a little bit of water. Um, and then we took these cones and the kids were creating pyramids in the sensory bin. Um, this is another one. We, um, sand foam, um, is three cups of sand and one cup of shaving cream, one can of shaving cream, uh, shaving foam, sorry, shaving foam. Wow. Um, and you mix it all together. You could create the sand foam. Um, and over here is moon sand. You can create it or you can buy it. Um, buying it gets a little expensive, but you can make it also in the materials and instructions are here. Um, and then with the moon sand, I also created these little dot to dot activities. And I wrote that dot to dot activities promote eye hand coordination. It helps boost pre writing skills as children create shapes, focus their pencil, and learn how to put pressure and apply it when moving the pencil. It builds concentration and visual motor control. So these are all really important skills that the children are learning while they're playing with the moon sand. So what's next, okay? So let's do a recap on this, you know, quick marathon of prepping for Pesach, okay? Step one was identify your age group and demographic and parent body. Step two was what are the goals for the holiday? What do you want the children to know? Step three is walk through each center in your classroom and think about how will I teach this goal in the centers, okay? So I just gave you a glimpse of a couple of different ideas from every center. The curriculum book has dozens and dozens of more ideas. There's like 10 pages for every single age group, a twos, a threes, a four section. There's so much more content and strategies and ideas. And the last thing is you wanna ask yourself, how can I bring in skill development based on where the children are now? We're at the end of March, beginning of April time. Where do the children need to be? Am I, am I reaching all the developmental milestones and how can I do that through the Pesach curriculum now? So if you want more ideas and more strategies uh, for each age group and ideas and, and just provocations for each center, then email me at Connie at discoveredconsulting.com or you can private, private message me on Facebook and I'll share with you more details on how you can get more ideas and strategies for your pace off curriculum and for other holiday curriculums as well. Thanks so much for watching and please leave a comment and share with other teachers who you feel would find this valuable. Take care, all the best.